to the Poker Media Australia podcast. My name is Ben Blaschke, Managing Editor of Poker Media Australia, joined as always by Landon Blackall. Landon, how are you? Great. As always, Ben, and uh, set for what will be a very busy couple of months uh, of poker. And in particular, so much happening on the World Poker Tour front. I myself just gotten back from Sydney from the annual Poker Championship Series that was hosted there at the brand new Pavilion Poker Room. It was a very successful series, almost a $400,000 prize pool for the main event alone. Um, there's heaps of QPCs coming up. Of course, the second rendition of the Gold Coast uh, QPC there in the next few weeks. That's going to be followed by Illawarra. Then we've got one in Newcastle. But uh, most importantly, we have the WPT Deep Stacks coming to the Gold Coast. And this will be the first casino-based series that's been held since the 2020 Aussie Millions. It's very, very exciting indeed. It is. And what better person to have as our guest today than uh, the great Lynn Gilmartin. Lynn, how are you? Hi guys, I'm good. I'm I'm wrapped to be here. I actually say first of all, Lynn, uh, congratulations. I know that you're expecting your first child. Uh, when when's the kid due, and what can you tell us about this great moment? Uh, thank you. I'm due at the end of June, so I've only got you know a couple months, a bit more to go, which I can't believe it's just flown by. And yeah, first baby, and it's just been. Honestly, it's just, it just feels like the greatest time of my life. I've just been loving the process so far and the shift in um, myself as a, as a person, I guess. Like, and, and, and for uh, my husband, Angel, it's just been really rewarding so far. And we haven't even met him yet. So I just can't wait to, to meet him. We're having a boy. <laughs> oh, that, that's the big news. Congratulations. Congratulations. <laughs> and, I mean, it's coming at a time too as we're coming out of the craziest 12, 14, 15 months that anybody has ever been through. I mean, what have you been up to over there? Tell us about your your 2020 and your past year also, because I know you've been through quite a bit that's happened. Yeah, there has been. So, somehow it's been uh, a very uh, lucky year for, for both Angel and I, and um, and I've, we've been quite busy. So I'm, I'm just so grateful that... Uh, that our experience will we've we've created some nice memories to look back on 2020 um and uh it all I guess started you know we were in lockdown in early 2020 uh in Los Angeles and we're sort of doing that for three months and to be honest I actually quite enjoyed the the you know because of being on the go all the time having the suitcase out at all times always seeing that in front of you knowing you're going to prepare for the next trip and stuff it's such a fun adventure but then it was a really um fun adventure suddenly a new one to just now be home and and not have a, a trip planned and 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 to really get into a, a, a beautiful routine and, and cook and um just be together and and uh then sort of discover new opportunities online and and new ways to get creative uh which we did with the world poker tour um we've been when we continue to do uh, but, you know, at the beginning of the pandemic, we just sort of all started to collaborate and come together from within the company and find all these new ways to um, to bring our product fully online. And, and it's been really exciting to see the success of that. I mean, we've always had Club WPT, but we never had any trophy events and uh, championship events online. And this 2020 was the first time that we 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 did that and it was a huge success. And we even made a totally virtual television show. Um, with some huge celebrities over in the States, Kevin Pollack, Jim, J- um, John Hamm. Uh, it was just so fun. And um, I got to hang out on Zoom with these guys all in their houses. <laughs> it was just such a, you know, after after watching poker for so long and, and, and you know, you see everyone come together at a table, I mean, that's, that's special. But then there was just a whole new layer of special added to it. Like how often do you get to watch a TV show where you have these you know, amazing celebrities just bantering amongst each other, but within their own houses. And you can see, you know, the photo frame on the back behind them on the wall. It was just really intimate and, and something so different. So it's been, it's been fun, uh, like just playing around with new ideas. And yeah, but then um, in May, uh, I landed a role in a film in Australia. So I'm an actor as well, um, outside of a, a poker anchor. And I couldn't believe it because the world was on pause. This was May 2020. Nothing was happening in the world at that time. And this audition showed up and I couldn't believe it. I was like, what on earth is in production right now? Um, but this production company really took advantage of the time. And, and obviously with Australia handling COVID so well, 
um, they set up this format of just forming a bubble and going to a, a remote resort up in far north Queensland and filming and living in the resort for an entire month and, you know, getting our tests and then staying within that bubble together. And, um, and it worked. So anyhow, I got that role for that film, couldn't believe it, suddenly then had to pack up our stuff in LA, Angel, because the borders were shut, my husband's Mexican, he wasn't my husband at the time, but we've been together 10 years. We, he was my husband by heart, but we thought, oh, my God, like we need to get you in the border, but you're not immediate family yet technically. So we drove to Vegas. We got married at a drive through wedding chapel, yeah. greatest wedding possible. It was just us. We just that we decided on the Wednesday that we were doing it on the Friday. Um, and it was in a drive through uh, chapel so that we didn't have to wear masks. Like Vegas was completely shut down. It was a ghost town. The, the strip was really creepy to drive through. Um, and there were no hotels, obviously. So we drove back to LA the same day. We got sushi, we ate it in the car and drove back and that was our wedding day. And it was just the best. My sushi and- was the wedding meal. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And then hopped on the next flight back to Australia. And so we came back to Australia in June and, um, did our quarantine, which was also a fun adventure. We just sort of looked at it as a, a gift from the Australian government as a, I was calling it a quarant moon. It was our a quarantine honeymoon. It was a free two week stay at a five star hotel in Brisbane. They fed us every day. Um, and yeah, and, and then uh, got through the quarantine and then shot that movie, which was a dream. And topically, top, it's pretty fitting that we're talking about it now because it actually is premiering this Friday here at the Gold Coast Film Festival. And I haven't seen it yet. It was a dream working on that, on that film um, for five weeks we were just in Palm Cove it was paradise and it was so fun to work on it because it's a it's a fun like love story it's called this little love of mine and with everything that was happening in the world at the time that's when all the riots were happening in the states COVID there was just so much more uncertainty then than we have now obviously so to just remove ourselves completely and hide away in paradise and make art um, was just the greatest gift to to be given um to sort of deal with the world at that time so this movie will always hold a very special place in my heart and i'm going to see it for the first time on friday (laughs) in a theater with everyone else i can't believe it but yeah that's kind of and that's sort of snowballed into i did a couple more projects as well like another film after that called kidnapped and um a netflix show i worked on a little bit so i've been busy it's all been here in queensland queensland's kind of the the new hollywood of 2021 i keep saying so much production is and now it's expended through all of Australia but uh, Queensland in particular just so much has come here it's been it's been amazing I was just gonna say Lynn that I mean one thing you can take out of the, all these experiences you're never going to forget this year you know getting married in Las Vegas in a in a, <laughs> in a Monday ceremony and uh, you know coming moving back to Australia and I mean it's certainly you're going to look back in 50 years time hopefully and go yep still remember that pretty well Yeah, and to add to it as well, we fell pregnant in October 2020, so uh, threw in a baby there as well. So I feel like we we sort of ticked off a decade's worth of milestones in, in, you know, one pandemic. Yeah. (laughs) As you said, I mean, coming to Australia is probably one of the the best places to be as the pandemic was happening around the world and still right now. I mean, have you guys spoken about, are you going to stay here for a while? What's the 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 plan plan in in terms of of travel and heading back to (laughs) Oh, gosh, yeah, it's impossible to (laughs) answer that. We're all bluffing our way through it. There's so much unknown. And (laughs) now with the baby, um, that sort of put... Hey, all you have to do is be you. That's going to be for the next few months. We'll have the baby here. And, you know, now there's a lot of... And, hey, optimism with the vaccine and everything being rolled out. Not being live, right? I fumble all Positivity the time come so, out of um, that and a bit more yeah, movement and freedom if we job. can restart um, then, at any yeah, moment we're just please. sort of taking it <laughs> i guess like month by month at this that's point. what that's why so, we save those bits um, for the outtakes yeah right, right. Soon. sometimes i got that a tangent was, uh, i'm like what did i just say can i just start that again <laughs> he loves it he loves it so much he um, right. he wants to buy a t-shirt that says Mexican Mexican Mexican. Mexican. <laughs> All right, we'll count you in in uh, three, he's, uh, two. He's, yeah, he's having a ball. He, we we always made a point of coming here um, at least every summer. Um, and so he's very uh, in tune with Australia. And that's always been our vision is to eventually um, move here. 
so it's 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 not a it's not a shock to him at all that that um he's been spending all of this time and he's been well accustomed to Australia the Australian accent that's probably the hardest thing for him to to get used to but yeah he's been playing poker at the star and um because we 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 stay just we're like five minutes away from the star which is so convenient here on the Gold Coast um and he's loving it so yeah we're chill we're happy <laughs> it's a good segue because we we're talking before about you know Queensland sort of being the home of uh, you know the Australian or global film festival at the moment and uh, Byron Bay sort of joined the, the party recently and, and Sydney as well but also Queensland is the home of uh, the resurgence of poker in Australia and, and you know things are starting to get pretty normal up there there's so many events happening but WPT Deep Stacks I mean as Landon said in the intro it's the first major casino tournament series we've had since the Aussie Millions in 2020 so I mean you yourself, but WPT in general must really be looking forward to hosting this event. Oh yes, absolutely. It's just, um, it's just such a milestone. It's such a, you know, like it's, it's like the official return. And, um, you know, I felt that when the star finally were able to open their cash game tables, uh, which was a few months ago now, but that was just so exciting. And I went down, um, Angel and I both went to play that night because I just had to be there for night number one. And um, that was such a great feeling. Like everyone, you know, it was a new table opening up and all of us uh, were seven handed. So all seven players were just beaming with smiles and were so happy to be there. It was just the most joyful poker table I've ever sat at. And the dealer as well, the dealer was just like, okay, bear with me, everyone. I might've forgotten how to do this you know we're all kind of like in it together and um just had a blast and uh and so it'll I ha- it'll have that same feeling having your the first big tournament back as well and uh yeah and, and, and coming in I mean we've been we the the response to our first world poker tour in uh 2019 in Australia was so successful it was so positive and um that was just so rewarding to see because it took it was our 18th season um, and for it to be the first time in Australia and me being an Aussie, that's the ultimate question I was always asked, when is the World Poker Tour coming to Australia? So it was so satisfying to finally be in Australia and then that all stopped <laughs> right after. So it's like, yes, all right, we're back, we're back. And uh, I can't wait. I just cannot wait. It's in May and it's going to be so fun. Yes, the WPT Deep Stacks Gold Coast Series, May 21 to 31, so 10 events over the course of 11 days. Let's talk through the schedule. Uh, anything in particular that you're looking forward to there, Lynn? All of it. <laughs> just all of it. But there's, you know, you've got the main event and then uh, we've got, a, what is it, a 2K and a 5K high roller as well. Like there's some really juicy events in there, but then there's also, I think, like 330 or something, like some more affordable ones as well. So it kind of suits all bankrolls. Yeah, of course, kicking off with the $750 buy-in opening event running over the course of three days. Uh, as mentioned, 330, 750 events, the all-important main event, $1,500 buy-in, and then uh, the 5K uh, challenge as well uh, towards the end. So not only do we have that, but uh, also very pleased to announce that Poker Media Australia will be the official live reporting team on the ground uh, during the course of the big dance. So uh, we're very pleased to have an all-Australian team, that is myself and Ben Blaschke, uh, teaming up with the WPT and the Star Gold Coast to bring you all the action from start to finish. Very, very exciting indeed. It is. Woohoo. It's so cool to have you guys on board. Yeah. The other thing too, Lynn, is that uh, before COVID, we were just gearing up for WPT Australia in terms of the first ever main tour stop to be held in Australia, which uh, now hopefully that does happen again sometime soon. Uh, I guess that was one of the downsides of COVID. But you know, from your perspective, are there plans, do you know, to, to bring that back hopefully in the not too distant future? All I can say is, yes, there are plans. I just can't tell you how they look yet. <laughs> But there's something bubbling away underneath. Then, like there that. always is, Ben. There always is. <laughs> Lynn, I'm, I'm interested to go back in time now, actually. I just want to look at uh, a bit back into your career. And, of course, everybody that watches World Poker Tour knows you very well. They've seen you hosting for many, many years. How did you get started? How did this all begin for you? Yeah, um, I... I cannot believe, but it was like 15 years ago or something. So I just can't believe it just makes me feel old when I say that. But um, I like fresh out of university, I, I got a job at Crown Casino 
and in marketing. I knew nothing about poker at all. I just got this amazing opportunity and I was working in gaming, but then very quickly noticed that the poker department was the cool one, you know, like that was like the sports vibe. That was where I wanted to be. And so um, I moved over into that department when, so when an opportunity came up and um, loved it, but I had never played the game because when you're an employee of a casino in Australia, you can't play and we've only got one per state really. So um, I wasn't a player at all. I just was making brochures and I just loved the events and, and the vibe of the events. And um back then YouTube was new and online content was very, very new. And uh, you, we just decided to start sort of making some videos and I was hosting some videos, but no one really knew what that meant. So we couldn't get like the budget for it. So just the marketing assistant, me, was the one who grabbed the microphone, just sort of winging it. And uh, I loved it. And so that kind of snowballed. So from there, um, I started working with Poker News and I left um, and I'm sort of basically moved over to Vegas and, and worked at the World Series in, in 2009 and started traveling the circuit with Poker News for, for four years as a reporter. And that was when I started to play then. Once I got to Vegas, I remember thinking, because I thought I knew, like I hung out in poker rooms all the time. Like, yeah, I know this game. Like, I know the players. No, I only knew Australian players. <laughs> I suddenly show up at the World Series and I had no idea who anyone was. It was so overwhelming and uh it was just a whole new beast. So I very quickly realized, okay, I need to, I got to, I have, A, I have to start playing um, and, and learn this game properly. And, and, and I just really dove in the deep end there. It was, it was mortifying. It was so scary, but, but I kept swimming and then um, yeah. And then was traveling with uh, poker news for four years. Loved that. Like when all over the world, Latin American poker tour, all through Europe, all through Asia. Um, and it was on the Latin American poker tour that I met, my now husband, Angel. And um, yeah. And then I got, so World Poker Tour. So it's eight years, it was eight years ago now the the opportunity came up with the World Poker Tour to not only host a new show that they were starting at the time called WPT Alpha 8, um, but then also I took over as anchor on the main tour here where I am now <laughs> on the set. <laughs> Um, and that was just, it's just been an absolute dream. And so I've, I, I came on as producer of the new show as well and um, just got to really learn the TV space because that was all new too. And um, yeah, it's just, it's, it's just the, the, the greatest company to work for. You know, it, it, Adam Pliska, our, our CEO, always says the WPT family. That's how he always calls us. He never calls us a team or a, or a company. He always says the family and, and wants to like reinforce that. And when you're traveling around the world with, with your colleagues, you do, you do turn into a, into a family. You can't, you have no choice, but to, to bond in that way. And it's, it's special. It's a really unique world that we all work in here uh, in poker. And we're very, we're very lucky. Yeah, I mean, I, I can tell just by, you know, talking to various people in the WPT team that, as you say, you are a family, uh, all very close knit, work very well together. Of course, last year, you know, we lost Mike Sexton, who was a big part of that. Um, you know, I've, been, I've interviewed Mike a few times in the past. Great man. What are your memories of Mike? And uh, I guess that would have hit you pretty hard too. Yeah, it was, it was devastating. Um, he was just such a special man. I don't think there's anyone else in the game whose heart was in it as much as is his heart. And he just dedicated his life to it. He just was so genuinely passionate about developing the game and, um, and, and celebrating the, like the, the, like the specialness of it, you know, like he wanted, he wanted players to dress up for it and, and to really celebrate the game and not just play it for, for the game that it is, but to the whole ceremony around it. He just really, he was just so special and, and he just lit up every room. I mean, um, the, whenever I would enter one of our tournaments, he'd always get there way early. He'd always get there so early because he wanted to be standing at the door, greeting everyone who was arriving. And no one ever asked him to do this. This was something he wanted to do because he just cared so much and he was so grateful for every single player who was entering a WPT event. And he would be there at that door until cards are in the air, until like even beyond that, you know, to go take his seat and play. But he wanted to be there with his big smile and he would greet 
as many people as he possibly could coming through that door. And every time he did greet people, he would greet you like he'd been waiting for you that whole time. Like, oh, you're here. Like I've been standing here this whole time. And he made everyone feel special, which is so unique like that. You know, it was just, it was really, really nice. Um, he, yeah, he just had something so special and and his his legacy will be, will exist in poker rooms forever. It, yeah. Well, I mean, that, that's the thing with, uh, with Mike is that he is part of what made the WPT so great. He's part of what made poker the poker boom initially in 2002, 2003, he was part of that. I mean, to look at, you know, to look at what's happened in the past 18 years for poker globally is quite amazing. And you've been on a lot of that ride too, as you say, you've been around for 15 years. So, <laughs> um, I mean, when you look back at, you know, when you started and look back at what's happened in that time, I mean, you must be amazed at how far you've come and that your life has become poker in many ways too. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's, it, poker has been, the greatest gift. It's just, it has gifted me so much amazingness in my life. It's gifted me my husband, um, this incredible job that I have and um, the the priceless opportunities and, and lessons that have come with traveling. And also just, I have to stop and um, remind myself sometimes. And, and, and it's, it's, it's when I speak to someone outside of poker and I describe what my job is, that that's when it's really like, yeah, this is a reminder of how unique our industry is and, and this that we're in, that we we are constantly surrounded by people who are brave enough to chase a, a massive dream, to invest in themselves and, um, and to share in that dream too, to constantly get to be table side when someone achieves that um, that massive goal that they've had their eyes on for a decade, you know, more. And for that to be somewhat of a norm and to see that has to have a wonderful effect on us, right? Like if we're constantly, repetitively surrounded by people like, you know, achieving and and getting their goal and getting something, achieving something that might be otherwise considered outrageous by other people, if that becomes a norm for us, then that's, that's amazing. Like that's so, that's, we're so lucky. And, and then that has to then spill into our life to give us the courage to chase big outrageous dreams. And, and I think that's played a huge role in uh, me chasing my, my, my acting dream. You know, that's something I gave up as a child. I, I always dreamed of being an actor, but once I got to high school, I, um, I let that go because, you know, I was bullied and I was, I was insecure and I thought, you know, who do I think I am thinking I could ever be an actor? And so I thought it was an unrealistic goal and I need to go to uni and get a real job. And so I did that. <laughs> but then now I think the, the impression that the poker has had on me over the years has been a really positive, inspiring one. Speaking of uh, life goals, Lynn, did I say that you were on Neighbours last year as well? Yes! <laughs> That's the crowning glory of any Australian actor. <laughs> I know, right? That's another amazing tick in 2020. Yes, I was on Neighbours, Ramsey Street, for a couple of episodes. How did that happen? And, and tell me about that experience. Um, I, it was an audition. It came up sort of quite suddenly. I uh, was in Melbourne at the time because I come home every Christmas, summertime, and uh yeah, I just got a call from my agent saying, there's an audition. Are you free tomorrow to go do this audition for, for Neighbours? It's just a, a, a small guest role. And I was like, yes, okay, amazing. And the character was really fun. She was pretty forward. She was a bit, um, you know, flirtatious and, uh, you know, yeah, it was just really fun uh, character to play. So I went to the audition, found out the next day I got it. It was so such a quick turnaround because it's such a beast of a show. I mean, it's been on for 35 years. It they just move so fast. Um, and so I think it was a week or two later that I was in Ramsey Street. So it all just happened like that, absolutely out of nowhere. I just finished lunch. I was walking down the street, got a phone call. Like that's where it came It came from. And um, it was, yeah, it was such a dream to uh, to just to be there. And, and um, the, uh, one of my scenes, um, I was working with Jason Donovan's daughter. And so he actually, for the first time, I think in a decade, had come to visit the set. <laughs> So I was just, he hadn't been there for forever, but it just so happened to be the day that I was working. And I was like, oh my God, I'm on, I'm at Lassiter's right now. And Jason Donovan is watching us film our uh, scene. This is cool. <laughs> I've probably got some American viewers that will be watching this and wondering, what are you guys talking about? This is a very <laughs> conversation we're having about 
you know, an <laughs> iconic Australian TV show. But uh, but man, that's that's got to be a life goal, isn't it? I mean, to your neighbours, wow, we all grew up watching that. Yeah. Oh, and you know what I did? I had a scene at Lasseter's and um, there was a, a scene where, uh, so the guy I was playing, um, so that I was acting with, we were on a date and uh, <laughs> there's a scene where we're in the background of a shot because there's this other girl that he's also seeing and she was watching from afar. So it was this shot where the director said to us, you two just, can you sit at this table and just be chatting, just be busy. And then after you know, about five seconds or whatever, he had to get up to go pay the bill. And because it was all in the background, I was like, I said to the director, do you have two credit cards? And then so he gave his, he's like, what? Because I didn't have my bag or anything. So he gives me his two like bank cards and I we played credit card roulette. <laughs> No one knew what it was. I had to teach him. And so you can see me in the background of neighbours. I'm shuffling two credit cards under the table and I pull one out and he goes and pays. I'm like, yes. <laughs> the poker into the neighbours scene. That's exactly. Cool. <laughs> Lynn, let's just talk a bit more about the Gold Coast. I mean, first of all, are you going to be playing any events at WPT Deep Stacks or are you too busy hosting? Um, well, I'll, I might be too busy growing a child. So <laughs> I am going to, I will be there and I, I hope that I will play an event, but I'll only, so I'll be huge by that point. I'm due at the end of June and this event's at the end of May. So I'll just be like two to four weeks away from uh, popping. <laughs> so I'm going to have a huge belly. So I'm not sure if I can sustain a poker tournament at that size, but we'll see. We'll see how my energy levels are going. I still feel like I could right now. So We'll see. A couple of questions that I wanted to ask, though, before you go. Um, I wanted to talk about your induction into the Australian Poker Hall of Fame. Um, Another tick for 2020. <laughs> unbelievable. And, of course, thoroughly deserved. I mean, the, you. the amount that you've accomplished within the industry has, has just been unbelievable. What was it like getting up in front of your family, your friends, and all your colleagues there in the poker industry to receive that award? It must have been tr something truly special. Thanks, Landon. Yes, it was so, I was floored. I, I could not believe that I was receiving this honour and, you know, to stand up there alongside all of these legends of the game who, as I was describing when I first started in poker and I was hanging out in the poker room, these were the guys who I was watching and, and like, too shy on the sidelines to ask for an interview, you know, like, oh, God, there's Jeff Lissandro, he's so scary, you know, like and Tony G and all these people. And... Then to be receiving an award um, and, and and to enter the Hall of Fame with with all of them, I just couldn't believe it. It meant so much to me. And I had said in my speech that uh, it's it th this whole journey that I've been on in the poker world has been such a gift that when it, when it feels that way, to then be given an award for your efforts in it, it doesn't feel like efforts. It doesn't feel like like I feel like I feel like the whole thing's just been a gift and. Uh, I'm still speechless. Like I still don't even have the words. And but you know, it was really special too to have all of my original, um, well, most of my like original team that I worked with in poker, all came down uh, for the day. And I had my parents there, and Angel was there, and also some some people from WPT, Angelica Hale, who is in Melbourne. She was able to come with her family, and we just had the best day. We had this long lunch and. It was actually a nine-hour lunch that we had after the the, the the ceremony. It was just beautiful and very, very special. I have the certificate actually framed right here next to my desk over there, so I see it every day proudly. On the WPT set for me? Yeah, yes, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> here in Vegas, that's where I am. <laughs> well, that, I mean, okay, so we go back through 2020. I mean, it is an incredible year, isn't it? Inducted into the Hapaka Hall of Fame, got married, having your first child, starring Neighbours, starring a movie. I mean, do you have a, a highlight that stands out above all else from that? Or? Uh, no, I think the whole thing as a, as a, as a whole is pretty, <laughs> is pretty outrageous. I did have to sit down one time. I was like, I can't forget what's going on here. I had to write it all down. I have this list. It's somewhere downstairs of what what happened in 2020 and so I as I said at the top of this show I will forever look back at 2020 with so much uh, gratitude because we've been very 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 lucky and I know that that's a, a, a where we fall in a minority 
it just seems like a whole lifetime's worth of things that have occurred for you in 2020. Is there anything on that list that you haven't yet achieved? Or is there something that after, once you get you settled into the joys of motherhood and have the opportunity to get back to work and everything uh, sort of starts to settle down, is there anything still left on the bucket list, list that you want to achieve? That's a really good question. I... Um... Because if I, I feel really like, I think as I, I think just the, the motherhood journey is the new achieve is the new focus and, and continuing with what I'm doing. Like I, I, I feel, yeah, I'm like, I mean, I, I love the world poker tour and everything that we're doing here and, and, and having this opportunity to be able to balance world poker tour with making films at the same time is an absolute dream come true that I, I never could have foreseen being able, being able to do that. Um, and now throwing in a family at the same time, I just, I guess my next goal is to ensure that I can continue doing all of them uh, as peacefully as I am now, because I just never want it to stop. I just, I'm just loving um, where I'm at right now. Yeah. Well, Lynn, uh, awesome to have you on the podcast and congratulations again. Uh, yeah, it is an amazing 2020. Most people look back and think COVID, you'll probably forget that COVID even happened in 2020. It was too much <laughs> other stuff. But yeah, congratulations again. Thanks for coming on the podcast. Thank uh, you. We'll see you on the Gold Coast, of course, next month there. And Landon, thanks for joining us again. Always a pleasure, Ben. Thank you. Thank you, Lynn. Thanks, guys. And we'll see everybody else next time.